four pages to the Mosa. So tonight's topic is called Remember Ye the Law of Moses. Remember Ye the Law of Moses. That, that is tonight's topic. Okay. Uh, let's open up with the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Malachi 4, verse 4. Come on. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Come on. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Read again, verse 4. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with my statutes and judgments. With the statutes and judgments. says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. You see the last book of the Old Testament? The last thing that the Lord teach, he puts upon the prophet is that, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Meaning, don't forget the law. The law is not done away with. That's what he's telling us right there. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Hold this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra 9, verse 37. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 37. Read that for me real quick. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 9, verse 37. Out of verse 36, come on. Verse 36. For we, for we that have received the law perish by sin. Come on. And our heart also which received it. You see what he's saying? We which we have received the law, we perish by sin. Because the laws of God was given to us, the poor tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. So the laws of God are not done away with. God's commandments, they are not done away with. That's what he's telling you right there. It says, notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. Okay, go back. Malachi 4 verse 4. Go back there again. The book of Malachi, chapter 4 verse 4. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, <laughs> which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. You see what he's saying? He says, remember ye the law, the law of Moses, my servant, because why? The laws of God, they don't perish. They remain in his force. He says, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Because we always read about that in Horeb. Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 14, verse 1. He says, remember ye the law of Moses, which I commanded unto him in Horeb. Okay, read that. Second Ezra 14, verse 1. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me. Read. Ezra, Ezra. Come on. And I said, Hear my Lord. And I stood up upon my feet. So now the Lord is speaking to our forefather Ezra. Read. Then said he unto me, In the bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moses mm -hmm. and talked with him when my people served in Egypt. Okay, go ahead. Come on. And I sent him and led my people out of Egypt and brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. And, we, and did what? And brought him up to the Mount of Sinai. He says, and he brought Moses up to the Mount of Sinai. Go ahead. Where I held him by me a long season. 40 days and 40 nights. So Mount Sinai is Mount Horeb. Mount Sinai is Mount Horeb, which is Mount Zion. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 33. 2nd Ezra chapter 2 verse 33. So we understand what is Mount Horeb. Okay, come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 2, verse 33. Read. I, Ezra, received a charge of the Lord upon the Mount Oreb. Upon the Mount Oreb. So the Mount Oreb is the Mount Sinai. The same way, the same place that Ezra was called, where Moses was called, that we're reading about in 2nd Ezra 14, is the same place where Moses was called. Okay, come on. That I should go unto Israel, but when I came unto them, they set me at naught mm -hmm. and despised the commandment of the Lord. 
They despise because Israel we despise the commandments of the law. You understand? So now watch this. Because what the Lord did with Moses, He's doing it with Ezra again. I'm going to show you why. Go back to Second Ezra 14. Now read verse 15. Now, Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 15. We're going to read that. Okay, come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 16. Read. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. Meaning the greater evils that you see, more is coming. All that. Give me second Ezra chapter 5, verse 2. He says, you're going to see more greater evil that you've seen than you have seen. Meaning more evil is to come. Read that. Second Ezra 5. Read verse 2. Second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 2. Read. But iniquity shall be increased above that which now thou seest. Read. Or that which thou hast heard long ago. Or that thou hast heard long ago. It says, iniquity shall increase above that which thou now seest. Now, this is during the time of the Persian Empire. It said, listen, Ezra, what you see right now is nothing compared with what you're going to see in the last days. It's going to be worse. Okay? So go back to second Ezra now. Chapter 14. Read verse 16 again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 16. Read. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. Shall be done hereafter. I mean, it's going to be worse. Go ahead. For look how much the old. Excuse me, sir. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 17. Read. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. Mm -hmm. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. So there's going to be evil that will increase in these last days. You understand? For the people that dwell therein. The people that are what? The people that move according to the, what? the rudiments of the world. There's going to be more evil. The evil will be fall. The, the, the land will be fall. Wherever Israel scattered, there's going to be much evil. The only light that will be shining it will be the prophets on the street corners waking the people up. Go ahead. For the truth is fled far away. Mm -hmm. And leasing is hard at hand. Leasing is lying, meaning lying, deceit, bearing false witness is hard at hand. You, through, you see through the media, social media, television, and so forth, movies. Go ahead. For now hasteth the vision to come, which thou hast seen. You see what he's saying? He says, for now hasteth the vision to come, which thou hast seen. Meaning the vision that you've seen is going to hate that the people must eat, meaning it must come to pass. Go ahead. Then answered I before thee and said, Behold, Lord, I will go, and thou hast commanded me, and reprove the people which are present. Mm -hmm. But they that shall be born afterward, who shall admonish them? Read. Thus the word is said, that, thus the world is set in darkness. And they that dwell therein are without light. Meaning they are without the laws of God. You see what Ezra is saying? Ezra is saying to the Lord, he said, listen, Lord, I will do as you commanded me and reprove the people which are present. Meaning during his time. He says, but they that shall be born afterward, meaning the people that will come after his generation, he says, who shall admonish them? Who's going to correct the people that come after me? That's what Ezra is asking. Then watch what he says here. It says, Thus the world is set in darkness. What is that? Sin. All that. Give me that in Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 60. We're coming back here. Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse 1. No, 60. 60. 60 verse 1 and 2. Come on. Excuse me, sir. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1. Go ahead. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. You see that thing? He says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The light that is come is what? All this, give me Proverbs 6:23. Let's see the light that is the light that is the light that has come. Okay. Proverbs 6, verse 23. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. Mm -hmm. For the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So you see, the law is light. The laws of God does the light. The laws of God does the light. Remember, the laws of God is talking about what? 
Jesus the Christ. You understand? Jesus the Christ. Watch this. Give me. Um, no, no, that's it on there. That's it on there. Go back to Isaiah 60, 60 verse 1. Verse 1 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1. Read. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, in the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We take up the light which is God's commandment, we will receive the glory of the Lord that will be written upon us. Go ahead. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. The darkness that shall cover the earth is sin. You understand? Sin. Go ahead. And gross darkness the people. Gross darkness is talking about what? The, the thick darkness that will cover the people. Which people? The people of Israel, the people of the Lord. Meaning what the whole earth is covered in darkness. But the children of Israel are covered in gross darkness. You understand? The level of darkness that our people is in is worse than all the other nations on earth combined. Read. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and mm -hmm. his glory shall be set upon thee. You see what he's saying? And his glory shall be set upon us. So the darkness is talking about, is talking about what? Sin. There's going to be great sin that will cover Israel in the last day. And that's what you see right now. Because remember, the law was given to us. We were given the light. And because of sin, we are no longer in that light as a nation. You understand? So we are the ones that are in more darkness than the rest of the earth. Because the laws of God was given to us. And to teach the nations. You understand? So go back to 2nd Ezra 14. 2nd Ezra chapter 14. Read verse 18 again. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 14 verse 18. Read. For the truth is fled far away. Mm -hmm. And leasing is hard at hand. Come on. For now hasteth the vision to come, which thou hast seen. Come on, read. Then answered I before thee and said, Behold, Lord, I will go as thou hast commanded me, and reprove the people which are present. But they that shall be born afterward, who shall admonish them? Read. Thus the world is set in darkness. The world is set in darkness. The world that is set in darkness, talk about Israel primarily. The world of Israel is set in gross darkness, like we read in Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. Come on. And they that dwell therein are without light. And they that dwell therein, meaning Israel that dwell in this wicked demonic kingdom, we are without light, which is what? The laws of God. So Ezra is telling the Lord the problem. He says, I'm going to go and do what you command me, Lord. But what's going to happen to the people that come after me? Who's going to correct them? Who's going to give them light? You understand? Go ahead. For thy law is burnt. For thy law is what? For thy law is burnt. For thy law is burnt. Remember, this is the Persian Empire. So before the Persian Empire, who was ruling? The Babylonians. What did the Babylonians do? They burnt everything. You understand? The Babylonians, they burnt everything of ours. They set everything of ours on fire. Okay, read on. Including the law, no including our books, our commandments, our secret books that held secret knowledge, they bend up everything. Go ahead. Therefore, no man knoweth the things that are done of thee. He says, therefore, because of that, nobody knows the things that you've done in the before. He says, nobody knows the things that you've done. Read. All the works that shall begin. Or the works that shall begin. He says, meaning what? The prophecy. He says, nobody knows anything now because our law is bent. Now watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings, okay? Give me 2 Kings real quick. Um, get 2 Kings chapter 2 Kings chapter 25, okay? 2 Kings chapter 25 and verse, read verse 9. 2 Kings 25 verse 9. This is when Nebuchadnezzar came, you understand? Um, because there was they, were, they, they came in different phases. You understand? So this part right here, this right here was the final, final, uh, was the final plague that he set upon us to take over the city of Jerusalem. Read verse 9. Second Kings chapter 25 verse 9. Second book of Kings chapter 25 verse 9. You know what? Start of verse 8. Start of verse 8. At this point, Zedekiah was the king. Zedekiah was the king. Okay, come on. Second book of Kings, chapter 25, verse 8. 
And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzar, Nebuzar Adan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. So they came to Jerusalem, he came with the captain of Nebuchadnezzar, came. Go ahead. And he burned the house of the Lord, and the king's house, mm -hmm. and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. You see what he did? They says, and he burned the house of the Lord. Because in the house of the Lord, what was in the house of the Lord? In the house of the Lord, you had what? Our books, our records. So they bend, they went into the house of the Lord, they bend everything with fire. Okay, read that verse 9 again. Second book of Kings, chapter 25, verse 9. Read. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, mm. and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. Meaning what? The mighty man's houses, he burned them with fire. It says also the king's house. The king's house, he burned with fire. Remember, when the king sat on the throne, it was required that he was he be able to write the laws of Israel. He be able to have the Bible written or translated rather, so that the people of Israel can be able to what to 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 be in line, to be in order. Watch this. Um, give me. Um, let me see. Yeah, give me Deuteronomy chapter seventeen. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter seventeen. Read verse eighteen. Watch this. This is talk about the king that will be set over us in Israel. Watch this. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 18. Read. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, hmm. that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book of that which is before the priests, the Levites. You see what he's saying? He says, this king will have to do that. You understand? Because he also must what? Must keep the commandments of the most High like God. Read on. And it shall be with him, and he shall read there in all the days of his life, Wait. that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them. You see that thing? That was the requirement. That was the law. So when they went into the king's house, they knew that the book of the books of the laws are there. The temples, our books are there. So they bend up everything. So go back to Second Kings twenty-five verse nine. One more again. Second book of Kings, chapter 25, verse 9. Read. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem. And every great man's house burnt he with fire. You see what he did? Go ahead. After he did that, watch what happens to me. Read. And all the army of the Chaldees, that were with the captain of the guard, break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. They broke down the walls of Jerusalem round about. That's why during the time of the Persian Empire, Cyrus allowed us to go back and rebuild because the Babylonians, they bent up everything, including our books. That's why Ezra says, thy law is bent. So go back to 2nd Ezra now, chapter 14. Okay, 2nd Ezra 14, verse 21 again. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 21. Read. For thy law is bent. Mm -hmm. Therefore no man knoweth the things that are done of thee. Or the works that shall begin. He says, listen, we don't have no record. Meaning at this point, there was no Genesis. There was no Deuteronomy. You understand? There was no Joshua. There was no Judges. You understand? Those books was not there. You understand? The books wasn't there. That's why it says, for thy law is bent. Therefore, no man knoweth the things that are done of thee or the works that shall begin. You see that thing? Remember, this is during the time of the Persian Empire. So, and before the Persian Empire, you have the Assyrian. You understand? Which is during the time of Isaiah also. Hosea also. And so on and so forth. So that means those books was not there. You understand? Those books wasn't there. Isaiah. They was not there. You understand? Watch what happens next. Come on. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me, mm -hmm. and I shall write all that has been done in the world since the beginning. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? He says, send the Holy Ghost into me, and I shall write all that has been done in the world since the beginning, meaning from the time of Genesis. Go ahead. 
which were written in thy law, mm -hmm. that men may find thy path, mm -hmm. and that they which live in the latter days may live. You see that thing? That they which live in the latter days may live. Meaning what? They might take up the law and keep the law and get eternal life. That's what he's saying right there. So the books that you see, Genesis, you understand? Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Ezra is the one that wrote these books because they were not there. They were all banned by the Babylonians. Understand that? They understood how to deal with Ezra. The Babylonians, they understood that thing. They said, listen, you want to destroy them? Take their records. Take their books from them. You understand? They really knew how to deal with Israel. Jump down to verse, read verse 38. Okay, come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 38. You know what? Read verse 23. Then we're going to jump. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And he answered me, saying, Go thy way, gather the people together, mm -hmm. and say unto them, that they seek thee not for 40 days. You see that thing? He says they must not seek you for 40 days. The same thing that happened with our forefather Moses. Jump down to the 38 now. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 38. Right. And the next day, behold, a voice called me, saying, Esdras, open thy mouth and drink that I give thee to drink. He says, open your mouth and I, I'm take that I'm giving you to drink. Go ahead. Then opened I my mouth, and behold, he reached me a full cup, mm -hmm. which was full as it were with water. Is it were with what? Which was full as it were with water. Which was full as it were with water. This water turned into what? Watch this. Come on. But the color of it was like fire. But the color of this water was like fire. You understand? That's the Holy Ghost we read about. Go ahead. And I took it and drank. Mm -hmm. And when I drank of it, my heart uttered understanding. He says, when I learned, when I took this, when I took this water, that its color looked like fire, he says, my mind uttered understanding. What did the Lord do for those 40 days? He was teaching Ezra. Go ahead. And wisdom grew in my breast. Great. Right. For my spirit strengthened my memory. And his spirit strengthened his memory. That's why it's important for you to study, you understand, to repeat the things that you study so that they can sink in your spirit. Then, guess what? Your spirit will strengthen your memory. You will remember the things that are written therein. Go ahead. And my mouth was opened and shut no more. He says, my mouth was opened and it shut no more. What was he doing? He was uttering understanding in the sport. Go ahead. The highest gave understanding unto the five men. Mm. And they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told. Read right. that were told to Ezra. Come on. Which they knew not. They didn't know what they were writing. Come on. And they said 40 days. And they wrote in the day and mm -hmm. at night they ate, the they ate bread. Read. Right. As for me, I spake in the day and I held not my tongue by night. Because he was just writing the things that the Lord was teaching and praying. Go ahead. In 40 days, they wrote 204 books. Stop right there. You see that thing? It says in 40 days, they wrote 204 books. 204 books. Because today we got 84 books. You understand? 66 in the normal Bible. And uh, I think it's what? Is it 8, 8, 18? Oh, 18 in the in the in the apocrypha and all that. Okay, come on. And it came to pass when the 40 days were fulfilled, mm -hmm. that the highest spake, saying, The first that thou hast written, published openly. You see what he's saying? He says, The first book that you have written, you must publish them openly. Why? Go ahead. That the worthy and unworthy may read it. That the worthy and the unworthy may read the book that you're going to publish publicly. Go ahead. But keep the 70 last. But keep the 70 books last. Read. That thou mayest deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. He says, but these 70 books, you must deliver them to the wise men. So we have secret records of understanding 
that not everybody was able to have access to. Go ahead. For in them is the spring of understanding, mm -hmm. the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. Really? And I did so. You see what Ezra did? Ezra, what we read today in Genesis, Leviticus, Exodus, and so forth, Ezra, he wrote those books. Understand that thing. Understand that's some heavy stuff right there. Now watch this. Go back. Go back to um. Go back to say. Go back to Malachi chapter four, verse four again. Malachi four, verse four. Let's go back there. The book of Malachi, chapter four, verse four. Read. Really? Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, mm -hmm. which I commanded unto him in or in Horeb for all Israel. With the statutes and judgments. So now you see he says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant. We just went to the remembrance of the law of Moses, his servant, that Ezra had to rewrite. You understand? But watch this. I'm gonna throw you a curveball. Watch this thing. Give me extra string that's eight. You might think you know what I'm doing, but pay close attention. This class is gonna be hard. Pay attention. Extra string with eight. He says, Remember you the law of Moses, my servant, right? Okay, watch this. Exodus 20, verse 8. We're going to read down to 11. Watch this thing like this. This is part of us remembering the law of Moses. We went over it, but I'm going to touch on it again now. Watch this. Come on. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Read. Really? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath day is the law that was given to Moses to teach us. This is part of the law of Moses that we must bring to our remembrance. Okay, go ahead. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Mm -hmm. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Right. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gates. Right. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the mm -hmm. sea, and all that in them is. And rested the seventh day. He did what? The, and rested the seventh day. He rested the seventh day. He rested the seventh day. Come on. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now what you see here is, this is the law that we read all the time when we go to camp to, remember, to bring to our, our the, the people the remembrance that they must keep the Sabbath day holy. Because the Lord rested on the seventh day. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 4 verse 1. Okay. He says, remember the law of Moses, my servant. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Because here's the thing. The law of Moses will bring back to your remembrance your day of the day of your deliverance. Understand it. The reason why you see our people in the church, they are not taught God's commandments, God's laws, is because those pastors... They don't want our people to get delivered from slavery, from captivity. That's why. That's why it's not taught. That's why we're the only ones that on the street that are teaching our people to repent and come up out of what Christianity, Islam, politics, and so on and so forth. Okay? Read verse 11 again for me. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 11. No, no, no. Exodus 20, verse 11 again. The book of um, Exodus 20, verse 11. Verse 11. Come on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, mm -hmm. and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Right. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Sabbath day is the day of rest. The Sabbath day is the day of rest for 24 hours, no working, no cooking, no buying, no selling. That's what the Lord says to do, right? Is the day of rest. Watch this. Give me Hebrews 4 verse 1 now. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Pay close attention. Okay, Hebrews 4 verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Go ahead. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering unto his rest. Mm. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Read verse 1 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Come on. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering unto his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. So the Apostle Paul is talking to the Hebrews. Says, Let us therefore fear. Fear me who? The most like God. Let the promise being left us 
of entering into his rest, the same rest that we read about in Exodus 20, verse 11. You understand? So we must enter into the true rest. It says, any of you should seem to come short of it. Shall come short of what? The true rest that is promised to us. You understand? It says what? Don't, don't fall short of it. Why? Go ahead. For unto us was the gospel preached. Stop right there. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached. Who's the us that was the, what the, that the gospel was preached unto? It says, for, because unto us, that's the word for me. For unto us was the gospel preached. Who was the gospel preached to? Watch this. Who's the us? Jump up to chapter 3, read verse 16. Hebrews 3, verse 16. Okay, come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 16. Read. Right? For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So the us is making reference to the people that came out of Egypt by Moses' hand, who were delivered by Moses through the Lord out of Egypt. That's the 12 tribes of Israel, our fathers and mothers. Go ahead. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? You see the question? It says, by who? But he says, what? But with whom was he grieved 40 years? Who grieved Moses for 40 years? Those that he delivered out of Egypt, the 12 tribes. Right? Was it not with them that had sinned? Mm -hmm. Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Meaning they died in the wilderness. Come on, right? And to whom swear he? that they should not enter into his rest. Come on. But to them that believe not. Because those that did not enter into the rest, the rest is the promised land. You understand? The land that flows with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, they didn't enter into that rest because they believed not. They didn't believe Moses. They didn't want to obey the law. They were murmuring and complaining. Go ahead. So, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter in because of unbelief, because they did not believe what, the, what Moses told them. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 8, verse 1. Deuteronomy 8, verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. You see that thing? That land that we need to possess, that's the land, that, that's the promised land right there. That's the rest he's talking about in Hebrews 4 and Hebrews 3. Go ahead. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to, mm -hmm. to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wilt keep his commandments or no. You see the people that greet Moses in the 40 years in the wilderness, that was Israel that we're reading about here. Go back to Hebrews 4 now. Hebrews 4, read verse 2 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 2. Read. Right? For unto us was the gospel preached. Stop right there. For unto us was the gospel preached. Who's the us? The people that greet Moses for 40 years in the wilderness, that's the us. What was the gospel that was preached to those people that greet Moses 40 years? Give, give me that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached. So the people that came out of Egypt were taught the gospel. Watch this. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Read. Right? In whom he also trusted. After that he heard the word of truth. Mm -hmm. The gospel of your salvation. Stop right there. The what now? The gospel of your salvation. The gospel of your salvation is the word of truth. The gospel of our salvation is the word of truth, meaning the laws of God. God's laws, that's the gospel that was taught to us when we came out of Egypt. That's why it says, for unto us was the gospel preached. You understand? So the gospel is the laws of God. Give me to tell me 4 verse 44. What is the gospel that Moses taught the people when he delivered them out of Egypt in the wilderness? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 44. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 44. Read. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. You see that? This is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. That's the gospel that was preached. 
The gospel that was taught when he came out of Egypt is the law. The law is the gospel. Okay? Go back to Hebrews now, chapter 4, verse 4 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 2. Go ahead. For unto us was the gospel preached, mm -hmm. as well as unto them. As well as unto them. And as unto us, he's going into what the people that gave Moses in the wilderness for 40 years. Those same people is the Hebrews that he's addressing. You understand? He says the same people that did Moses, they were taught the gospel. Guess what? The same people I'm addressing now, you are the same people who I'm now teaching the gospel again. The Hebrews. Go ahead. But the word preached did not profit them. Mm -hmm. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see that thing? They didn't have faith. They did not have faith when they heard the gospel that was preached unto them. Why? Hold this. Give me Deuteronomy 32, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Read verse 20. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 20. Come on. And he said, I will hide my face from them. Mm -hmm. I will see what their end shall be. Because our end is the transatlantic slave trade, the sub saharan slave trade, the Silk Road slave trade, apartheid colonization. That's our end. You understand? Go ahead. For they are a very fraud generation. Mm -hmm. Children um, in whom is no faith. Children in whom is no faith. That's what we just read. So go back to Hebrews 4. Read verse 3 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3. Come on. For we which have believed do enter into rest. You see what he's saying? It says, for we which have believed do enter into rest. Those that keep the commandments and have faith in Christ. Because remember, the Hebrews, they understood the law, but their problem, their stumbling block was believing on Christ, no longer in the animal that has to be slaughtered. You understand? For atonement of sin. That was their stumbling block. You understand? So that's why here, yeah, read that verse again, verse 3. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Into rest, meaning those who believe on Christ, they keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. He says, they do enter into rest. The true rest has come. Read. As he said, mm -hmm. as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, Read. though the works were finished from the foundation of the world. We're going to deal with that in a second. It says, as I have sworn in my rest, if they shall enter into my rest. What is that talking about? Hold this. Give me Psalms 95 verse 8. Psalms chapter 95 verse 8 because King David spoke about this thing. I told you, this class is going to be hard. Pay attention. Okay, make notes. Psalms 95, read that verse 8. The book of Psalms chapter 95 verse 8. Read. Harden not your heart mm -hmm. as in the provocation. Because we provoke the Lord in the wilderness. Go ahead. And as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Because you see that thing? We harden our hearts, we provoke the Lord to anger. You understand? It says, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Go ahead. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work. Because we saw the, the glorious things that the Lord did for us, but we were still rebellious as a nation. Go ahead. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation. Mm -hmm. And said, it is a people that do err in their heart. Read. Right. And they have not known my ways. They have not known the ways of the Lord, which is the commandment. Come on. And to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Read that again, verse 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 95, verse 11. Read. Right. And to whom I swear in my wrath that mm -hmm. they should not enter into my rest. That's what we just read in Hebrews 4. It says, unto whom I, it says, as I have sown in my rest, if they shall not enter into my rest. The Apostle Paul is quoting King David. Hold this. Give me Numbers 14, verse 23. Watch this. Because the Most High God, he, he made an oath. He says, listen, you Negroes that member, do member against me, you will not enter into my rest. They didn't make it into the promised land. You understand? Read that. Numbers 14. Read verse 23. The book of Numbers. Chapter 14, verse 23. Go ahead. Surely 
they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Mm -hmm. Neither shall any of them prove. The book of Numbers chapter 14, verse 23. Come on. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. You see what he's saying? That's that the land is the rest. The land is the rest, which is the promised land. Jump down to the 13 now. Come on. The book of Numbers chapter 14, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land. Concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein. Mm -hmm. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. You see that thing? It says, doubtless he shall not come into the land, the rest. Okay, go ahead. But your little ones, which he said should be a prey, them will I bring in. Mm -hmm. And they shall know the land which he have despised. Yeah, they shall know the rest which they have despised because of what they are unbelieved. Go ahead. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. You see what he's saying? Your dead body, you're going to die. You're going to drop dead. Go ahead in the wilderness. You're not going to enter into the rest, the land that was promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. And your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years. And bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Because the Lord says, I'm going to make sure that I destroy you in the wilderness so you don't enter in. The only people that are going to make it in is Joshua, Caleb, and the children. That's what the Lord did. And the Lord made sure that that thing came to pass. You understand? So go back to Hebrews now. Chapter 4. Read verse 3 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 3. Read. Right? For we which have believed do enter into rest. Mm -hmm. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. See that thing? He says, as I have sworn in my rest, if they shall enter into my rest, meaning the land. Watch this, come on. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now that's heavy right there. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. What is he saying? What is he saying? Meaning the rest was already declared from the foundation of the world. The promised land was given to us from back then. Watch this. Give me that in um, Isaiah 46 verse 10. Isaiah 46 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter you know 40. What? Start of verse 9. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 46 verse 9. Mm-hmm. Remember the former things of old, mm -hmm. for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So he's, made, he's bringing to our remembrance, says, remember the former things of old. Then you go back to the beginning and remember the things that were set up from the beginning. Read on, verse 10, come on. Declaring the end from the beginning. Stop right there. So the most High God, he declared the end. From the beginning, meaning when he did the beginning, the end was already declared. Understand that? That's the God we say. From the time of Adam, guess what? The end was already set. From the time of Genesis, already. Okay? Read. Really. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. You see that thing? The, the ancient times is the beginning. The ancient times is the beginning, it says. Declaring from ancient times the things that are not yet done. So from the beginning, the Lord had already declared the things that are not even yet done. They were already declared from the beginning, from the jump. Read. Say, my counsel shall stand. His counsel will stand. Go ahead. And I will do all my pleasure. The Lord will do all his pleasure. Hold this. Give me second Exodus chapter 2 now. Second Exodus 2. Okay. Second Exodus 2, read verse 10. We're going to read now. Come on. Second book of Exodus, chapter 2, verse 10. Go ahead. You know what? You know what? No, no, no. We're not going there. Go back to Hebrews. I'm jumping ahead. Hebrews 4. Read verse 3 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 3. Go ahead. For we which have believed do enter into rest. Mm -hmm. As he said, I have as I have sworn in my wrath, 
if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. He says the works were all, the works are already finished from the time of when he says, let there be light. The works was finished already. That's what the Lord is saying. This is from heavy. This is a hard thing. You understand? Go ahead. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. You see that thing? He says, and he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Meaning he that has understanding will understand what I'm about to say. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. We touched on that in Exodus 20. Watch this. Give me Genesis 2 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Now watch this. I want you to pay close attention to the words that are being used here. It says, for he spake in a certain place. Keep that word in mind. In a certain place. Okay, read that. Genesis 2 verse 1. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Mm -hmm. And all the host of them. The heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. Read. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. Read. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. We just read that. Go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. You see that thing? So this certain place, remember. This certain place right here is the certain place which we are going to read about, which the Most High God is going to give us understanding what it means, this certain place. So go back to Hebrews 4 now. Hebrews 4, read verse 5. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 5. Go ahead. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Read that again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 5. Mm-hmm. And in this place again. Stop right there. Hold on. In this what? And in this place again. In this place. In this place. Which place? There's a certain place that we read about in verse 4. It says in this place again. 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 In this place again. Which place is this? Hmm. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 3 verse 5. In this place again. Second as a three verse five. Let's see what is this place. Why is he saying again? This place. Read that. Second as a three verse five. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter three, verse five. Go ahead. And gave us a body unto Adam without soul, mm -hmm. which was the workmanship of thine hands. Go ahead. And did us breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. Adam was given wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. And thou ledest him into paradise. Stop right there. What did the Lord do? And thou ledest him into paradise. He led Adam into paradise after he created Adam and breathed into him the breath of life. He led Adam into paradise. That's the certain place in Hebrews 4. The certain place is this place called paradise. Again, go ahead. Which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. Before what? Before ever the earth came forward. Because it says declaring the end from the beginning. Before the ever the earth came forward. Guess what? This place was already prepared for us. You understand? This place, this certain place, again. You understand? We're going to enter into this verse again. Because guess what? The first time when we entered into the rest, is when we came out of Egypt, we were into the rest. Then it says, in this place again. Which place is he talking about? The same place that he referenced in verse 4 in Hebrews. You understand? Hebrews 4 verse 4. When it says a certain place. That certain place is the paradise he's talking about right here. Give me that in Ezekiel 36, 35. Ezekiel 36 verse 35. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 35. Come on. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. Stop right there. So this land that was desolate is become as the Garden of Eden. Which land is that? Jump up 
read verse, read Ezekiel 36 and 1. Watch this. Pay close attention. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 1. Read. Also, thou son of man, mm -hmm. prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say. Stop right there. He says, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel. The mountains of Israel is the land of Israel. The mountains of Israel is the land of Israel. Read that again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Now jump down to verse 36 and 35 again. So now we understand the land that he's talking about here, he's talking about the land of Israel. In the midst of the land of Israel, he's letting you know what's there. Read that, verse 35. Come on. The book of Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verse 35. Go ahead. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. You see that thing? So he's letting you know where the Garden of Eden is. The Garden of Eden is located at the heart of Jerusalem, northeast Africa. He's telling you where the Garden of Eden is. The land of Israel, that's where the Garden of Eden is, where Adam was created. You understand? And he was led into paradise. That's the paradise. That's why the Palestinians. And the so-called white people calling themselves Jewish, they are fighting for that land because they know the Garden of Eden is in the heart of that land, right there. Understand that. Give me Ezekiel 20, verse 6. Start of verse 5. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 5. Go ahead. And say unto them, Thus said the Lord God. In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob mm -hmm. and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt. Stop right there. Now, this is heavy. I want you to pay close attention. Read that verse again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 5. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob. Mm -hmm and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt. The Lord made, made his, his hand known unto us in the land of Egypt when we were delivered, right? Go ahead. When I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. And when he delivered us out of Egypt, we had to be prepared to go into that land. Into that land. What land is there? He's going to tell you what land is there. He read it in Ezekiel 36. Or watch what is called here. Read verse 6. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into the land that I had espied for them, mm -hmm. flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. You see that thing? So this, this land that flows with milk and honey, it says it is the glory of all lands. Meaning this is the best land on the planet Earth. This is the best land on the planet Earth, the land of Jerusalem. And at the heart of the land of Jerusalem, what is that? The Garden of Eden. You understand? That paradise that we read about in 2 Hebrews 3. Watch this. Go back to Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4, read verse 4 again. Read 4 and 5 together. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Stop right there. You see this part right there? It says, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Hmm. Hold this. Go back. And I don't know if some of you missed it. Go back to Genesis 2. Genesis 2. Read verse 1, 2, 3 again. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Go ahead. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. Right. And he rested the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Go ahead. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 5. Now. Go ahead. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 5. Mm -hmm. 
and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had, had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Because they've never seen rain before. That's why during the time of Noah, everybody was surprised about rain. There will be a mist that will come up from the earth to water everything on the, on the earth. Okay, come on. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Hold on, read verse 6. You, you jump verse 6. Read verse 6. Excuse me, sir. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 6. Read. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. That's how, that's how everything was watered. The mist that came from the earth and watered everything on the earth. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Come on. And man became a living soul. That's when Adam was formed, right? Watch this. I want to show you something. Remember, when he spoke of the certain, uh, a certain day at this certain place. What? He's going to tell you what that certain place is. Keep in. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Mm -hmm. And there he put the man whom he had formed. What did he do? And there he put the man whom he had formed. So before he put the man whom he had formed, what did he do? Read verse 8 again from the top. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. Go ahead. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So great day. He planted a garden eastward in Eden. Remember, Genesis 2 is giving you a more detailed account of Genesis 1. It's just a repeat. So now when it says, because Genesis 2 verse 7 is actually spoken about where? In Genesis 1 26. Read Genesis 1 26. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image. Stop right there. Let us make man in our image. At this point here, he's been, this part right here is being repeated in Genesis 2 verse 7, starting with Adam. You understand? So Genesis 1.26 is repeated in Genesis 2 verse 7. He's giving you the specifics of the man that was created first. Okay, read that again, verse 26. The book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Read. And God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You see that? Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. Mm. In the image of God created he him. Mm -hmm. Male and female created he them. You see that thing? He says, uh, in the image of God created he him. That's Adam right there. Male and female created he them, that mankind. So go back to Genesis 2, read verse 7 again. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life mm -hmm. and man became a living soul. Next verse, come on. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Mm. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So this garden that was that this garden that was planted eastward in Eden, Eden is that the garden of Eden. That's the paradise. Adam was put into that paradise, like we read in Second Isaiah three verse five and six. This part, this paradise right here. Guess what is called in Hebrews four? Go back, Hebrews four. Read verse four again. The book of Hebrews chapter four verse four. Go ahead. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on mm -hmm. this one. There's a certain place. This certain place, that's the Garden of Eden. The Lord spoke about the seventh day when he, he spoke about the creation account and all that, that, which is what we're reading about. In Genesis 2, 1 down, the Lord is letting you know. When he, was, when he rested, he rested where? He read, that's where he rested. He wanted, when he rested from all his work, he also created men to rest from all his work in that certain place. What's that certain place called? The Garden of Eden. You see that thing? Now, read verse 4 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. Mm. And God did rest the seventh day 
from all his works. He rest from he rested. The God did rest the seventh day from all his works. That certain place is the paradise, which is called the Garden of Eden, where Adam was placed. Go ahead. And in this place again. Stop right there. In this place, which place? That certain place. Which place is that? The Garden of Eden. You see this thing right here? Go ahead. If they shall enter into my rest. Now, what verse do you write? Verse 5, sir. Okay, read verse 5 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 5. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. You see that thing? It says, in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. That place is what place? The paradise, the garden of Eden. Watch this. Go back. Now give me second Exodus 2. Second Exodus 2. Read verse 10. Second book of Ezra, chapter 2, verse 10. Thus said the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem. He, he says he will do what? Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem. That's the rest. That's the certain place. Go ahead. Which I would have given unto Israel. Read. Their glory also will I take unto me. Mm -hmm. And give these the everlasting tabernacles which I had prepared for them. These everlasting tabernacles, that's the rest. The rest, that's the kingdom of Jerusalem. The everlasting tabernacles, which is what? Everlasting kingdom, which I had prepared for them. When did the Lord prepare this? He prepared it from the beginning. That's what we read in Isaiah 46. Declaring the end from the beginning. This rest was already prepared from the time when the Lord said, let it be light. Go ahead. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savior. The tree of life. Remember the tree of life? We were going over it in last night during the Q&A, right? The, the tree of life. Okay. Read. They shall neither labor nor be weary. We're not going to labor, neither are we going to be weary. Go ahead. Go and you shall receive. He says, go and you shall receive. As well. Go ahead. Pray for a few days unto you, that they might be shortened. He says, pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. Because these days that we are living in, they must be shortened. We must pray for the, those days to be shortened. Because if they are not shortened, everybody going to be put to death with the nuclear bomb. Go ahead. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. You see that? It's already set. The kingdom is set already. You understand? The kingdom is already prepared for us. That's why the apostle Paul said what he said here. But he's, he's using hard speeches. He's not making it plain. Go back to Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Read verse 6 now. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 6. Go ahead. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter the inn. Stop right there. It says, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter the inn. It says, it therefore it remains that some must enter the inn. Who's the some that must enter into the text? Give me the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. I don't know, Zechariah 18 verse 8. Zechariah chapter 13. It says, the sum. Who's the sum that must enter into the verse? Zechariah 13. Um, read verse 8. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. Read. And it, came, and it shall come to pass that in the Latin... The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. Read. And it shall come to pass that in all the land... Said in the all Lord, the land. In all the land. 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 That's North America. Go ahead. Babylon the Great. Said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. He says, two thirds of Israel will not repent. Meaning 66 out of 100 of our people in the land of Babylon, they are not going to repent. That's what the Lord is saying. 66 out of 100 of our people, God says they are appointed to die. Hold this. Give me second Exodus 9 verse 9. Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. They are appointed to die. No, no, not 9, verse 20. Second Ezra, 9, verse 20. Watch this. Second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 20. Go ahead. So I considered the world, 
and behold, there was peril because of the devices that would come into it. The devices that came into the world is the evil, wickedness that came into it. Read on. And I saw and spared it greatly. The Lord says he saw it and he spared it greatly. Why? Come on. And have kept me a grape of the cluster. He says, but in this, in this world, the Lord says he spared it greatly and have kept to himself a grape of the cluster. I mean, one grape out of a cluster. That's letting you know the proportion. You see a cluster of grapes? Out of that cluster of grapes, the Lord says, I'm only choosing one grape out of that cluster. Go ahead. And a plant of a great people. And a plant of a great people. Watch this. Come on. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. You see that part right there? Let the multitude perish then. What is the multitude? The multitude is the cluster of grapes. He's comparing the two thirds of our people that will not repent to what? To the multitude and a cluster of grapes. He says, which was born in vain. They were born just so that they can be put to death. That's the only reason why they are here on this earth. Go ahead. And let my grape be kept. Let my grape be kept. The grape is the, what, the one third of Israel that are destined to repent and keep God's commandments. Read. And my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. The labor is what? The keeping of the commandments that we may be proved by the Lord that we humble down to this Bible. And do what it says that when the Lord returns, we are going to get delivered. Okay, go back to where was that now? Zechariah 13, read verse 8 again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. Read. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, mm -hmm. but the third shall be left therein. But the third shall be left therein. That is those that remain and that must enter into the rest. The one third of Israel that are just, that this is the elect. The elect of Israel. Go ahead, verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire. He says he's going to bring the third part through the fire. That's, that's the word of God, number one. Two, it goes into the nuclear fire, the nuclear bomb of World War Three. Go ahead. And we will refine them as silver is refined. Read. And we'll try them as gold is tried. Meaning what? We have to go through trial. You understand? Go ahead. They shall call on my name. The commandments of the Lord. The commandments of the we want to keep the commandments, and when we pray, the Lord will hear. Wait. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. Because that's when we are delivered. Okay? Go back to Hebrews 4. Read verse 4 again, verse 6 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter the inn. Stop right there. You see this part right there when he says, seeing therefore it remaineth. Now, this is a hard saying too. It says, seeing therefore it remaineth. What remains? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is still remaining? What is still there since standing unto this day? From the time when the Lord said that they be like. Jump up to verse 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For he spake in a certain place of the Stop seventh right day. He spake in a what? For he spake in a certain place. Stop right there. Jump down to verse 5. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 5. And in this place again. Stop. A certain place is this place again. What is that place? Read verse 6. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 6. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter the inn. Stop right there. Seeing therefore it remaineth. What is the it that remaineth? The, the place again and the certain place which is paradise, which is the garden of Eden, the glory of all lands. That is the it that still remains unto this day. That's a hard thing. Go ahead. And they to whom it was first preached enter okay. not. Mm, it says what? And they to whom it was first preached Enter Come not on. in. Enter not in because of what? Because of unbelief. Now that's another hard thing. I'm not going to touch that. Jump down to the sea. Now watch this. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Read. For if Jesus had given them rest, mm -hmm. 
Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? You see that thing? He says, if Christ has given us rest, he was not going to speak of another day. Another day of what? Another day of rest. Christ was not going to speak about that. Hold this. Give me Matthew 11, verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Come on. Come unto me, all ye that labor, mm -hmm. and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see what Christ is saying? He says, come unto me, all ye that labor. Okay, what are we doing? We're laboring right now. Hold that to me, Micah 4, verse 10. Micah, chapter 4, verse 10. Come unto me, all ye that labor. Okay, read that. The book of Micah, chapter 4, verse 10. Read. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. You see that? Be in pain and labor. Be in pain and labor. That's what we're doing right now. We are in pain because we're laboring. To do what? To bring forth Zion. Go ahead. O oh, daughter of Zion, mm -hmm. like a woman in travail. Like a woman going through a what? A, a, a labor pain. Read. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, mm -hmm. and thou shalt dwell in the field. I mean, that's the wilderness. It says, we're going to go out of the city. Which city is this? Babylon the great. And thou shalt dwell in the field. That's the wilderness. Go ahead. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. Read. There shalt thou be delivered. You see that? There yeah. shalt thou be. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, read, verse, read the verse 10 again. Okay. I'm really going somewhere else here. Read verse 10 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 10. Read. Be in pain and labor to bring forth mm -hmm. of daughter of Zion. Come on. Like a woman in travail. Read. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Stop right there. He says, you're going to go forth out of the city. That's Jerusalem. Read. And thou shalt dwell in the field. The field is captivity. In the land of our captivity. Read on. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. The, the, the Babylon is in the field. Meaning the land of our captivity. Babylon the great. The United States of America and the rest of the land of our captivity. Read on. There shalt thou be delivered. Because there shall thou be delivered, meaning there's going to be a major deliverance in North America. Go ahead. The Lord, there the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. You see that thing? There the Lord will redeem us from the land of the, the hand of our enemies. Okay. Go back to Matthew now. Chapter 11, verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Read. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, mm -hmm. and I will give you rest. You see that? We are labor. We are, we, it says, all ye that labor. You understand? We're laboring right now. We are in pain. Where are we? In captivity. And a heavy laden, hard bondage. Heavy, heavy laden with sin. And I will give you rest. The Lord says, it's going to give us rest. That's the promise right there. You understand? Go ahead. Take my yoke upon you mm -hmm. and learn of me. The yoke is the Bible. The yoke is the Bible. Come on. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Mm -hmm. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Are you going to find rest unto your souls? Because right now, we have not found rest unto our souls. We're just wandering in the wilderness, in the lands of our captivity. You understand? Serving hard bondage. The Lord says, I'm going to give you rest unto your souls. The true rest, that's why it says, if he had not spoken of another day, another day of what? Another day of rest. Because we have not received the true day of rest. The Sabbath day that we observe is the, it, 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 the Sabbath day we observe now is our, we, we, we showing forth our faith that we want to receive the true day of rest. So our people don't want him to observe the Sabbath day. What are they saying? They are saying they don't want, they don't want to come out of slavery. They are saying they don't want to come out of captivity. That's what they are saying. If they cannot observe one day, 24 hours of no buying, no selling, no cooking, no working, guess what? They are not going to be able to observe the true day of rest. They are not going to be in the kingdom if they cannot keep 24 hours, as, as the Lord said in Exodus 3, verse 8 to 11. You understand? Because that's a sign of your faith. Understand that. Now watch this. Give me, um, give me the book. Let me see. 
Um, yeah, give me Hebrews 4 verse 8. One more guess. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. Go ahead. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? You, you see that thing? He was not going to speak of another day when he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, I'm going to give you rest unto your souls. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Peter 3. Okay, another day of rest. Let's deal with that. Okay, some of you have I've taught I've touched on this on the on the stage before. Second Peter three, uh, read verse um, yeah, read verse eight. Second book of Peter chapter three verse eight. Mm -hmm. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, okay. and a thousand years as one day. So to the most that God, a thousand years to him, a thousand years to us is one day to us. I mean, a thousand years to a thousand years to us is one day with the most high. Think about that. A thousand years to us is one day to the heavenly father. So guess what? Read that verse again, verse 8. Second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And a thousand years as one day. Watch this. Read on verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men come slack, mm. but is not thing? suffering to us. It says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Which promise? The promise that he says he's going to give us rest. The Lord is not slack concerning that particular promise because some people think that listen you've been saying that Christ is coming back he is coming back understand that this is ever since from the beginning we've been hearing this story this is these are not stories this is actual these are facts the black messiah is coming back that's why we're waking up this day in these last days so it says don't be slack concerning that particular promise go ahead that the Lord will give us rest for the Lord to give us rest he must return and deliver us from the hand of our enemies. Read. But is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see that thing? He says, is long suffering to us, Lord. Who's us, Lord? Meaning us, the Israelites. The Lord is long suffering to us, Israelites. Not willing that any should perish. The Lord don't want nobody to, to be put to death, but he says, but that all should come to repentance. The most that God wants Israel to come to repentance. But guess what? He's talking about the elect. Because the elect are the ones that will come to repentance. The rest, they are, they are were created just so that they can be put to death. That's, the, that's why. They were appointed to death. There's nothing they can do. Watch this. Give me now the day of rest. That day of rest is that thousand years of rest. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation 20 verse 1. Revelation 20 verse 1. Pay close attention. The book of Revelations, chapter 20, verse 1. Go ahead. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. The key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in the angel's hand is talking about what? Captivity. Particularly a specific people that are going to be what? That are going to be put in slavery. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Job real quick. Give me Job 30, okay? Give me Job chapter 30. Start at verse 5. We're going to read down. The book of Job chapter 30, verse 5. They were driven Wait. forth from among men. Mm. They cried after them as after a thief. The, the, the day that were driven forth from among men is talking about what? It's talking about the Caucasian race. They were driven forth from among men. You understand? They cried after them as after a thief. We cried after them as though we are chasing a thief. This is during the Dark Ages. When Rome fell in 193 AD, it became the period called the Dark Ages. That's when they were driven off from among men. Where did they go? Go ahead. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. The cliffs of the valley is the bottomless pit. 
You understand? The keys, the, the cliffs of the valley is the bottomless pit. Where is this located? It's located between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's Europe. Okay, go ahead. Among the bushes, they pray. Pray. Under the nettles, they were gathered together. Pray. They were children of fools. Mm. Yea, the children of base men. You see that thing? Is that these are children of fools, children of base men. Go ahead. They were viler than the earth. The worst people on earth. Go ahead. And now am I their song? We are their song now. They speak evil of us through the media because the devil has given them this great mouth to speak great words. Go ahead. Yea, I am their power. That's why they call us kafirs and duckies and negroes and baboons and whatnot. Read on. They abhor me. They flee far from me. Mm -hmm. And fear not to spit in my face. They don't, they don't, they don't even, they are not afraid to disrespect us. So the cliffs of the valley is talk about that's the bottomless pit. Okay. So now go back. Revelation 20, read verse 1 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 1. Read. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. The great chain goes into what? It goes into slavery. They are going into slavery. You understand? Read on. The keys to the bottomless pit is the key to slavery. Read on. And he laid hold on the dragon, mm. that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. You see what he's going to do to the white man? They are going into slavery for a thousand years. This thousand years right here, that is the thousand years that we are going to be at rest. You understand? Now jump down to the four. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 4. Read. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Mm -hmm. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, Okay. Hold on. Read verse 4 again. Let's take it slow. Read verse 4 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 4. Read. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Stop right there. He said, he said, he saw thrones, and they sat upon the thrones. You understand? Meaning what? They let. And judgment was given unto them. Judgment was given unto the elect. Watch this. Give me Daniel 7 real quick. Let's go to Daniel. It says, judgment was given unto them. Meaning power. The judgment here is talking about power. Daniel chapter 7, read verse 18. The book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. Read. But the saints of the Most High shall mm -hmm. take the kingdom. Shall what? Shall take the kingdom. The saints of the Most High God shall take the kingdom. That judgment that will be given to us, we're going to take the kingdom. We're going to have power. We're going to take our kingdom back. Read. And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. You see that thing? We're going to possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. We are going to possess the kingdom that the Lord will give unto us. Understand that? Okay, let's go back. Revelation 20. Read verse 4 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Stop right there. Hold this. You know what? Because these thrones that were set up and judgment was given unto them, it took about the leaders, the elect, the leaders of the elect, the leaders of the 144. Hold this. Give me, give me, give me uh, Matthew 19, verse 29. Matthew chapter 19. Um, read verse 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 28. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, mm. when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, read. ye also shall sit upon the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 
You see that thing he's talking about, who's he talking about? He's talking to the apostles. He's talking to the disciples. He said, listen, you, you also, you're going to sit on the throne. Uh, when the son of man shall sit upon the throne of his glory, he also, you 12, he also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Revelation 21 verse 12. Book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 12. Read. And had a wall great and high. Read. And in 12 gates. And at the gates, 12 angels. And names written thereon. Which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel? Jump down to verse 4, 14. Now let's see who was the leaders of these, on these 12 gates. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 14. Read. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. Mm. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. You see that? So the apostles, guess what? These apostles, they are the ones that will be sitting on these 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what he's talking about. They'll be sitting with the Son of Man on the throne of his glory. So let's go back. Revelation 20, verse 4 again. <clears throat> of Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Wait. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Mm -hmm. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. So the souls that were beheaded, it goes into, it goes into the apostles that were beheaded, and those that the followers of Christ. You understand? Go ahead. And for the word of God, mm -hmm. and which had not worshipped the beast. Wait. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So now these people that we're reading about here, it says what? It says, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Meaning what? For the witness of Jesus. The souls that were beheaded, meaning killed for this truth. Now our forefathers that died and us that the Lord would, well, whatever the Lord decides, that's what the Lord decides. You understand? It says, killed for the what? For the witness of Jesus. Because he's going to get to that. Where we're going to have to give our lives for this truth. Understand that? Literally. You understand? So watch this. Um, give me, give me that in Revelation 6. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. We left. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 9. Read. And when he had opened the fifth seal, mm -hmm. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Come on. And for the testimony which they held. That's the witness of Jesus. The souls, you understand, is that the souls of them that were slain, those that were beheaded. Read. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, how long, O oh Lord, holy and true, mm -hmm. dost thou not judge the, and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? You see that thing? He says, when are we going to get our vengeance? That's what they're asking. When are we going to get our vengeance? That's what they're asking the Lord up there in the heavens. Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Mm -hmm. And it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season. They should do what? That they should rest yet for a little season. That they should rest yet for a little season. Hmm. Go ahead. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. You see what it's saying? Is that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also, and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Meaning the 144,000 must be sealed with God's laws. Then this uh, is what they are asking the Lord to do. It will surely come to pass. Understand that thing. Go back to Revelation 20. Okay. Revelation 20. Um, read verse 5 now. Read verse 6 again. Read, I mean, read verse 4 again. Yes, read verse 4 once again. The book of Revelations, chapter 20, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Mm -hmm. 
and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. Stop right there. It says what? It says, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead. The beast is talking about what? The white image of Jesus. That's the image of the beast. The white image of Jesus that you see today, people saying in the churches, that's Jesus Christ, that white image. That's the image of the beast. You understand? It says, neither received his mark. That is what? That's the Christianity and political system. Okay, it says, neither his image, meaning the image of the beast, uh, neither receive his mark that goes into politics and religion, which goes into sin, idolatry, upon their foreheads, meaning they don't, they, they believe, they support that. Okay, or on their hand, meaning they support. In their foreheads, is in their head, they believe it. On their hands, means they support the political system, the religious systems of Christianity. Okay, go ahead. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They did what? And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So those that, that don't worship the image of the beast, neither, they don't worship the beast, neither the image, neither receive the mark upon their forehead or on their right hand, is that they're going to live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Hmm. Keep going. Now, but remember, the this, the, hold on. This thousand years is the thousand years of bread that we read about in 2 Peter 3, verse 8, in Hebrews 4, verse um, 8. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 5. Read. Really? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were, were finished. Mm -hmm. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection. It says, that, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the rest of the dead, meaning the rest of our people that is dead, they are not going to live until they are woken up when the thousand years are finished. That's our people that did not believe in this truth that are dead. They are only going to be woken up after the thousand years are finished. Now watch this. Hmm. You know what? Keep going. Let's keep reading. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. So right there. It says, blessed and holy is he that has the part in the first resurrection. Hold this. Give me the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. First book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13. Go ahead. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, Concerning them which are asleep, meaning those that were slain for the testimony and the witness of Jesus. They that kept the commandments, our forefathers that are dead already. Go ahead. That ye sorrow not, mm -hmm. even as others which have no hope. You see that thing? He says, don't, don't, don't worry about them, them that are asleep, or them that are, or those that are going to die for this truth in these last days. He says, don't worry about them. Watch this. Go ahead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, mm -hmm. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. It says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, meaning if we believe that Christ died and rose again, even so, meaning the same way, them also we sleep, meaning those also that died in Jesus that he says that we sleep in Jesus will go where God bring with him. When, when the Lord returns, he will come with the soul that died defending this gospel. You see that thing? That's what he said right there. Hmm. Keep going. And remember, these souls right here, these are the same souls that were complaining to the Lord. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall mm. not prevent them which are asleep. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? 
is as for this we shall say unto you by the word of the Lord that we that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. What is the Apostle Paul saying? The Apostle Paul is saying when the Lord returns, he's going to be alive. He is going to see the Lord return, come back. That's what he's telling you right there. He says, for we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent those, them which are asleep. Meaning what? He's going to tell you what that means. Go ahead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, mm -hmm. with the voice of the archangel, right. and with the trump of God. Right. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's what that's the explanation by this. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Meaning those that died in this truth, they are going to be resurrected first. That's why it says, blessed is he, blessed and holy is he that he has what? Has the part in the first resurrection. Because the dead in Christ shall rise first. Go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. You see what he's saying? He says, repeating verse 4, verse 15 again. He says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Meaning what? When we are taken up into the chariot, we are going to meet those that, that died in this truth. We're going to meet them first in the chariot. Okay, go ahead. To meet the Lord in the air. Mm. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Go ahead. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, this is a heavy saying that the Apostle Paul is saying here. He is letting you know, like, listen, you're going to have to die for this truth. That's what he says right there. But he says, nevertheless, comfort, your, comfort one another with these words. As Christ died and rose again, even so, we also, if we die in this truth, we are going to be resurrected first. That's what he's saying right there. Right there. That's what he's saying. That's some heavy stuff right there, one. Now, watch this. Give me, go back up to verse 13. 2 Thessalonians, no, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13. Watch this. Remember, don't forget the thought what we read in Revelation 20, verse 6. Okay? Read that. First book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13. Read. But I would have you, first book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13. Come on. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, mm. concerning them which are asleep. He says, concerning them which are asleep. Go ahead. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Even as others which have no hope with those that are asleep. Why? Go ahead. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now stop right there. You see what he's saying right there? So what is he saying? They, those that die. He says, those that die, right? As Christ died and rose again, even so them we sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him? Meaning, when he says, will God bring with him? What is he saying? What is he saying? Give me Isaiah 57 verse 1. What is he saying? Isaiah 57 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 57, verse 1. Go ahead. The righteous perishes. Mm. The righteous perishes, and no man layeth it to heart. Right. And merciful men are taken away. You mean they die? Go ahead. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Are the righteous, they are taken away from the evil to come. They mean in the day of the Lord. Watch this. Go ahead. He shall enter into peace. He shall enter into peace, meaning into peace. Watch this, go ahead. They shall rest in their beds. They shall what? They shall rest in their beds. They shall rest. They shall rest in their beds. Go ahead. Each one walking in his uprightness. Each one doing what? Each one walking in his uprightness. Each one doing what? Each one walking in his uprightness. Each one walking, each one walking, walking in his uprightness. That means they are what? I'm going to show you what they are. Give me Revelation 6 verse 9. Go back there. Each one walking in his uprightness. This is how they're walking. Watch this. Revelation 6 verse 9. We're going to read through verse 11 again. Read it. 
the book of Revelation, the sixth verse nine. Go ahead. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God mm. and for the testimony which they held. Come on. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, They did what? O Lord, O Lord, holy and true. Hold on. Wait, read verse 10 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 6, verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, So, they what? And they cried with a loud voice. They cried, they cried, they cried with a loud I thought they were saying in verse 9. Is that the souls of them which were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. So how are they crying? You see the thing right there? Go ahead. Say, how long, O Lord, holy and true, mm -hmm. dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So they are talking. They are communicating with the Lord. Hmm. Go ahead. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season. Stop right there. Stop right there. Watch this. Um, read verse 11 again. The book of Revelation chapter 6 verse 11. Mm -hmm. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Stop right there. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 7 verse 14. Go ahead. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation mm. and have washed their robes. And did what? And have washed their robes. They washed their robes. Go ahead, wash this. And made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You see that thing? They made their white, their, their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. Meaning one, they kept the commandments of the Lord. They gave their lives for this truth. That's what it said right here. You understand? So guess what? These that are speaking right here in Revelation 6, they've already received their crowns and their robes already. You understand? That's why it says, relax a little while until your brethren and your fellow servants also that, that should be killed as they were should be, should be fulfilled. Meaning what? Until the 144,000 are sealed with God's commandment. That's the elect. That's what he's talking about right there. Understand that thing. Now, go back to Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20. Um, read verse 6 now. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, the 6. Wait. Right. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Because the one that has a part in the first resurrection is the one that will be that will be risen up, that will return with the Lord when the Lord returns. They will be there already in the decarriage. And those that will be alive when the Lord returns, which will not see death, they will meet the Lord in the air with those that will watch that were slain for the witness of Jesus. Okay? They are part of the first resurrection. Go ahead. On such, the second death has no power. The second death has no power over these individuals, the elect. We want, listen, you, we all want to be in this number. Understand that. Okay? We want to be in this number. It says, on such, the second death has no power. Go ahead. But they shall be priests of God mm -hmm. and of Christ Great. and shall reign with him a thousand years. You see that thing? They shall reign with him a thousand years. It says, but these are the, those that are part of the first resurrection, it says the second death has no power. Remember what it says. Jump up to verse 5 so we understand we don't lose the thought. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 5. Mm. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were yet were finished stop right there so the rest of the dead is that they lived not again meaning what the rest of our people that died that have sinned you understand when the lord returns they are they, guess what they are going to be asleep those that are died already they are going to be asleep they are going to be woken up after the thousand years are done 
Once the thousand years are finished, guess what's going to happen? Give me that in Second uh, Corinthians five. Let me show you what's going to happen. Second Corinthians five verse nine. Watch this. Second book of Corinthians chapter five verse nine. Go ahead. Wherefore we labor. Second book of Corinthians chapter five verse nine. Mm -hmm. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him. We may be accepted as a living sacrifice unto Christ. Go ahead. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You see that thing? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That judgment seat is after the thousand years are finished. You understand? This is the final judgment. After the thousand years are expired, when those that are not part of the first resurrection, they are going to be part of this judgment. That's why this is the second death right here. This right here is the second death. Go ahead. That everyone may receive the things done in his body mm -hmm. according to that he had done, Wait. whether it be good or bad. Whether it be good or bad. Go ahead. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Knowing therefore the what? Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. Because that's going to be terrifying on that day. If you're not part of the first resurrection. Go ahead. We persuade men. We persuade men. That's why we go to the seat to persuade our people to come into this truth. Read. But we are made manifest unto God. Mm -hmm. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. You see that thing? And I, he says, and I trust also that are manifest in your conscience. Meaning the things that we persuade you with, these are the things that we trust that will be manifest in your conscience as it pertains to the conscience. You understand? Which is what Christ did for us. Understand that thing. Okay? Now, go back to Revelation 20. Read verse 6 again. The book of Revelations, chapter 20, verse 6. Hmm. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Wait. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Because that's what? Those that reign with Christ for a thousand years, this right here will be part of the first resurrection. And then after that, everybody will be woken up and that's when the final judgment, which is the second death, will take place. Understand that thing. Now, watch this. Jump down to verse 12. You know what's that of verse 11? Read 11 and 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And I saw a great white throne, and with him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Right. And there was found no place for them. That's when, that's when the Most High, that's when the Lord show up on the scene, the Most High God. Go ahead. And I saw the dead, mm. small and great. Go ahead. Stand before God. Meaning everybody, this is all nations now. They are all going to stand before the Most High God. Read. And the books were opened. You see that part right there? The books, their book, the books about their lives. Because they've been multiple times, we've all been here multiple times on this earth, many times before. That's why they call it deja vu. Because we've all been here before, living multiple lives in different generations. That's why it says, and the books were open. The books about your life. Go ahead. And another book was open. And another book, singular, was open. That's the Bible, right? Which is the book of life? Which is the book of life, read. Right? And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books mm. according to their works. You see that? According to their works. It says the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book, meaning their books. So what is this talking about? When it says the dead were judged, meaning they are going to be woken up after a thousand years and they are going to be judged according to the books of their lives according to their words based on the book of life. Okay? Jump down to verse 14. Watch this. 
the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 14. Mm -hmm. and, and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Mm. This is the second death. You see that thing? It says, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. This is after the thousand years. Watch this. Go ahead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see that thing? This is after a thousand years. Those that are not found in the book of life is that they are going to be cast into the lake of fire. That burneth with brimstone forever. That's what's coming. You understand? This goes for our mothers, our, our aunties, our uncles, our brothers who don't want to repent. If they don't repent, they're going to be in this lake of fire forever after the thousand years. Understand that thing. Okay. Now, go back. Go back to Malachi now. Malachi. Hmm. Malachi 4, verse 4 again. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, hmm. which I commanded unto him in horror for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. You see that thing? Now you're supposed to remember the law of Moses. We all must remember the law of Moses. Do you understand? which was commanded unto him in order for all Israel with the statutes and judgments for breaking these laws and statutes and commandments. We just read about those judgments. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So the Lord says he will send us Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the evil day come, the Lord says, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet. Watch this. Give me, keep going, read verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Mm. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Read. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Because before I bring judgment upon this earth. Now you notice here. You see, where verse 4 says, remember the law of Moses, my servant. So Elijah, what will he bring to the children? He will bring to remembrance, and he will bring to our remembrance the law of Moses. You see that thing? The Elijah will bring unto our remembrance the law of Moses. That's what Elijah would do. Elijah will bring unto our remembrance the law of Moses. Understand that. That's what we read in here. Read that verse again. Read 5 and 6 together again. Come on. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Read. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. So Elijah will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of the fathers is this Bible. The heart of the fathers is the Holy Bible. The fathers is Malachi, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Joshua. Moses, you understand? Nehemiah, Zechariah. These are the heart, these are the fathers that he's talking about. Go ahead. And the heart of the children to their fathers. The heart of the children back to their fathers because today the heart of their children is what? What is the mind of the children today? Is the other nations. You understand the history of the other nations, us glorifying the other nations. That's the heart of the children now. Read. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Before I bring judgment on this earth. Watch this. Give me the right 48 verse 1. If you have to get chapter 48 verse 1. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 48 verse 1. Go ahead. Oh death. No, no, no. The right 48. The right for Ecclesiasticus. 48 verse 1. Excuse me, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 48 verse 1. Read. Right. Then stood up Elias the prophet as fire, mm. and his word burned like a lamp. This is, the, this is going into Elijah the prophet that will descend before the second coming of the Messiah. Go ahead. He brought a sore famine upon them, mm. and by his zeal he diminished their number. Come on. By the word of the Lord he shut up the heaven, mm. and also three times brought down fire. 
Elijah brought, he called fire down from heaven. Go ahead. Oh, Elias, how was the honored in thy wondrous deeds? Read. Really? And how may glory like unto, and who may glory like unto thee? And who may glory like unto you, Elijah? Go ahead. Who did rise up a dead man from death? Hmm. And his soul from the place of the dead. Read. Really? By the word of the Most High. Because Elijah was raising the dead. You understand? Go ahead. Who brought his kings to destruction? Hmm. And honorable men from their bed. Come on. Who heard us the rebuke of the Lord in Sinai. Read. Horeb, the judgment of vengeance. Come on, because remember Elijah, he, what would he bring? He will bring us the what? They will bring to our remembrance the law of Moses. That's what we're reading here. Read again verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 48, verse 7. Come on. Who heard us the rebuke of the Lord in Sinai. Mm. And in horror, the judgment of vengeance. Come on. Who anointed his kings to take, re to take vengeance, revenge. Excuse me, sir. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 48, verse 8. Read. Who anointed his kings to take revenge and prophets to succeed after him. And prophets to do what? And prophets to succeed after him. So Elijah anointed king to take revenge and he anointed prophets to succeed after him. Meaning Elijah had what he had disciples, okay, that proceeded after him. Elisha was one of them. Go ahead. Who was taken up in a whirlwind of fire. Who was taken by a chariot, read. And in a chariot of fiery horses. Read. Who was ordained the reproofs in their times. No, no, read that right. Come on, verse 10 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 48, verse 10. Read. Who was ordained for reproofs in their times? Read. To pacify the wrath of the Lord's judgment mm. before it break forth into fury. Before I come and smite the earth with a curse. Go ahead. And to turn the heart of the Father unto the Son. Read. And to restore the tribes of Jacob. You see that thing? That's the same thing we read in Malachi 4 verse 6. Go ahead. Blessed are they that saw thee mm. and stepped in love. Come on. For we shall surely live. Because what would Elijah do? Elijah will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children back to their fathers before the Lord will come and smite the earth with the curse. The Lord will send Elijah to do this thing. To bring to our remembrance the laws of Moses. Read. Elias it was, mm. who was covered with a whirlwind, Ray? and Elias was filled with the spirit. That, El that Elisha, come on. Whilst he lived, he was not moved with the presence of any prince. He was not moved by the presence of any prince. Okay, come on. Neither could any bring him into subjection. Meaning what? To stop teaching God's commandment, Ray? No word could overcome him. Read. And after his death, his body prophesied. Read verse 13 again. Read verse 13 again. What did he do? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 48, verse 13. Come on. No word could overcome him. Read. And after his death, his body prophesied. And after his death, his body did what? And after his death, his body prophesied. And after his death, his body prophesied. After his death, his body prophesied. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 4, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 16. Watch this. Now, this goes into, this right here goes into, it says, while it says, and Elisa uh, was filled with his spirit while he lived. He was not moved. This goes into Elisha. But I want to show you, I'm going back to Elijah now. Because Elijah, he didn't die. Elijah didn't die. Elijah was translated. You understand? Watch this. Give me, you know what? Hold that. Give me the book of first Kings. Elisha, Elijah was translated. Okay. No? Second Kings chapter 2. Let's read verse, verse 9. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 9. Watch this. Second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 9. Wait. 
And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee mm -hmm. before I be taken away from thee. Really? And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Come on. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Mm. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. You see what he said? He says, if thou ask the hard thing, but that's a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee. Okay, go ahead, verse 11. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire mm. and horses of fire. Come on. And parted both and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. You see that thing? Elijah never died. He was taken up. He was translated. Watch this. Give me that in Ecclesiastes now. Chapter 4, verse 16. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 16. Come on. There is no end of all the people. Read again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 16. Read. There is no end of all the people. There is no end of all the people. There is no end of all the people. What is King Solomon explaining here to us? He's telling us that the people come back. We come back every third or fourth generation. We return back on this earth over and over. Okay? That's why I said there is no end of all the people. Right? Even of all that have been before them. Even those that have been before them, they come back. Right? They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Right? Surely this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Because you don't remember when you come back. Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4. The Lord says he's going to send Elijah before the coming and the dreadful, before the coming of the dreadful and, and the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 4. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4. One generation passes away. Mm -hmm. And another generation cometh. Wait. But the earth abideth forever. The Lord is telling you that the earth remains, but generation come and generation go. Meaning there is a cycle. Wait. The sun also ariseth, and mm -hmm. the sun goes down. Wait. And hasteth to his place where he arose. So now in verse 5, he's comparing the generations of men in verse 4 to the rising up of the sun and the going down of the sun. He says, what? The sun rises and the sun goes down and hastened to his place where he arose. Then he goes back, goes in circles, just like generations of men. Right? The wind goes toward the south mm -hmm. and turneth about unto the north. Right? It whirleth about continually and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. According to his circuits, meaning what? The wind blows you understand, to every direction. From where it started, it goes to different direction, it goes back to where it started. So it's comparing the generations of men to the wind. Read on. All the rivers run into the sea, mm -hmm. yet the sea is not full. Now it's, it's comparing the generations of men to the sea. It says all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Because you've got what? You've got sunlight, then it hits the ocean, and then there's evaporation, then there's a cycle. It just keeps going. The generations of men, they are like that as well. Go ahead. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, mm -hmm. they return again. You see that thing? In a circular motion. Wait. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. Wait. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. You see what he's saying? He says, all things are full of labor. Pay attention to that. He says, all things, all things, things, things are full of labor. Go ahead. And man cannot what? Man cannot utter it. Stop right there. You see what he's telling what the things are? The things that are full of labor, he talk about man. The generations of man. He says, all things are full of labor, meaning what? Cycle. 
all men go through cycles, meaning one generation comes, another generation go. One generation come, another generation go. A full of labor, meaning cycle. Okay, go ahead. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, mm -hmm. nor the ear filled with hearing. Meaning you're not going to know everything, you're not going to see everything. Go ahead. The thing that has been, mm -hmm. it is that which shall be. Go ahead. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Go ahead. And there is no new thing under the sun. You see that thing? The subject matter here is the thing. The thing that has been in the past is the thing that is going to be in the future. And the thing which is done is the thing that we shall be done in the future. And there is no new thing under the sun. Get it if you see 6 and 10. Let's see what the thing is. King Solomon explains it here. Go ahead. Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 10. Come on. That which has been named, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 10. Come on. That which has been is named already. Read. And it is known that it is man. You see what it's telling you? That which is that which has been is named already. I mean, it already has a name. And it is known that it is man. So the thing that we're reading about in Ecclesiastes 1 is the spirit of man. Mankind. He says they come and they go. They keep coming back over and over upon this earth. That's why they always have a saying, history repeats itself. Okay? Because the same spirit comes back upon this earth. They do the same things that they've done in the past. If you're wicked back then, when you come back, the Lord brings you, you're going to be wicked again. Okay? If you keep the commandments back then, when the Lord brings you back, you're going to keep the commandments again, so on and so forth. Read. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. He cannot contend with the most high God. He does what he wants. Go back to Ecclesiastes 1. Read verse 11 now. No, verse 10. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 10. Come on. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. You see what he's saying? Is there, is, there, is there anything, meaning is there any spirit of man that you can say, see, this is new, meaning this is a new spirit? Can you say that? No, you cannot, because they've been here before. Go ahead. It has been already of all time. They've been here already of all time, meaning from the past. Go ahead. Which was before us. Which was before us. Wait. There is no remembrance of former things. There is no remembrance of former things, meaning what? The spirits of old, they cannot remember what they what if they've been here before and what they've done. They can't remember. The most that God has blocked that understanding from men. Read on. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Meaning what? You're not going to remember what you've done in, in the past based on in the future based on what happened in the past. You're not going to remember. The Lord has blocked that understanding. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, um, give me the book of, um, give me the book of Luke. Okay? Give me Luke chapter 1. Luke 1, verse 5. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 5. Let's see. Because you remember it says, the thing that has been is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there's no new thing under the sun. There's no new spirit that you can say this is a new spirit on this earth. They've been here before. A newborn baby, they've been here before. Okay? Read that. Luke chapter 1, read verse 5. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Go ahead. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah. Wait. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. So now you've got Zacharias and our foremother Elizabeth. Jump down to verse 7. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 7. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. So now, Zacharias, our forefather, and Elizabeth, our foremother, they were married, but they had no children because our foremother was barren. She could not conceive. Go ahead. And they were old. They said they were well stricken in age, in years. Wait on. 
And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Because their, their responsibility, Zacharias, our forefathers' responsibility was, like, was to light incense in the temple. That's why I said he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Read on. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. That was his law. You know, come on. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. Come on. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Oh. So while he was burning the incense, you understand, it says the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Go ahead. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Wait. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and Wait. thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son, mm -hmm. and thou shalt call his name John. So it says, Listen, your wife Elizabeth will conceive, you want to call his name John. Come on. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. He says, many will rejoice at John's birth. Come on. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Mm. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He was another, right? Come on. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. Even from his mother's womb. He says, he's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. This is some heavy stuff right here. This is Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Write that down, write that down. Go ahead. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Read again verse 16. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 16. Come on. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Because John was going to have disciples. John will teach the people to repent. Okay, come on. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. So brave day. He shall what now? And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. He shall go before him, meaning John, the spirit of John, is that when he goes out and teach, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Who's Elias? Elijah. Go ahead. Come on. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. So brave day. Where did you just read this? We just read this in what? In Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Sirach right, chapter 48, verse 10 and 11. Read that again. He shall what? And he shall go before him in the spirit of, in the spirit and power of Elias. Read. Right. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Read. Right. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Come on. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Because John the Baptist was going to pave the way to Christ. You understand? You understand? He was going to lead the people to Christ. Watch this. Give me Matthew 3 verse 4. Matthew chapter 3 verse 4. Remember, we're reading about John the Baptist here. But then it says, He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Hmm. Matthew chapter 3 verse 4. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 4. Come on. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair mm. and, a, and a leather girdle about his loins. He, he, was, he was wearing a leather belt around his waist. He would put on a leather belt. Go ahead. And his meat was locusts and wild honey. This is John the Baptist here. Meaning what? He says what? His clothing, his raiment was camel, camel's hair. He was wearing camel fur. Fur. Watch this. Give me 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 8. Watch this. Second book of Kings chapter 1, verse 8. Watch this. Read. And they answered him. He was a hairy man and mm. girt with a girdle a, of leather about his loins. Mm. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Read again, verse 8. Come on. Second book of Kings, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. And they answered him. He was a hairy, he was an hairy man 
and mm. girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. So hold on. Elijah, he says he was a heavy man because of what? Because of what? Because of camel's hair. Just like John the Baptist. And get with the girdle of a leather belt about his loins, a leather belt. Go ahead. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. It is Elijah the Tishbite. Watch this. Give me John 1 verse 19. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 19. Come on. And this is the record of John. Mm. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? Who are you? Who are you, John? Okay, come on. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. He says, I'm not the Christ. I'm not Jesus the Christ, because people thought he was. Wait. And they asked him, what then art thou Elias? Art thou Elias? Are you Elijah? Go ahead. And he said, I am not. Mm. Art thou that prophet? Wait. Answered, no. And he answered, no. So he said, no, listen, I'm not the Christ. Are you Elijah? I'm not Elijah. That's what he said. Hold this. Go back to Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. He says, I'm not. I am not. Watch this. No, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 11. Watch this thing right here. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 11. Come on. There is no remembrance of former things. You see that thing? There is no remembrance of former things. You can't remember. Go ahead. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come. Mm. with those that shall come after. That's why John the Baptist didn't remember. Because it says there is no remembrance of former things. So go back to John chapter 1. Read verse 21 now. Yes. The book of John chapter 1 verse 21. Read. Really? And they asked him, What then art thou Elias? Mm. And he said, I am not. Mm. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. He says, no. Go ahead. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. That we may give an answer to the scribes and Pharisees that sent us to ask you. Go ahead. What says thou of thyself? He says, what do you say of yourself? What do you, what do you have to say to yourself, John? Okay, come on. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Hmm. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. You see that? He says, that's all I can remember. He says, but you see what he's saying here? He says, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, said the prophet Isaiah. So he's quoting Isaiah here. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew now. Matthew chapter 17, read verse 10. The book of Matthew chapter 17, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Wait. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come. And Elias, restore, shall, is a, Elias truly shall first come. Come on. And restore all things. Elijah truly shall first come, and Elijah will restore all things. Go ahead. But I say unto you, Mm -hmm. That Elias is come already. What did he say? But I say unto you, mm -hmm. that Elias has, is come already. But I say unto you, Elias is come already. Come on. And they knew him not. What but Matthew? Have come unto him, the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 12. Okay, read verse 10 one more day. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 10. Come on. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. So Elijah will come and restore all things. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they knew something about this thing. They knew something about, they knew about regeneration. They knew that the prophets come back, you come back over and over. And the, his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? They understood about the prophecy in Malachi 4, verse 4 to 6. Okay, come on. 
So Elijah will come and restore all things. What is he going to do? He's going to he's going to turn the house of the fathers to the children. Watch this. Go ahead. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. But he says, hold on now. Yes, I understand that Elijah will come. Elijah is going to come and restore all things. Verse eleven is Malachi four. But what we're reading here is not talking about Malachi four and verse twelve. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. Elijah is come already. Go ahead, watch this. And they knew him not. They didn't know that it was him, right? But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Meaning they what? They tortured him. And okay, go ahead. Likewise, shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Meaning what? He's gonna be put to death, just like what they did to John, right? Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Read that again, verse 13. What did the disciples understood? Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. The disciples understood that John the Baptist was Elijah coming back. They understood that. You understand? Matthew 16, verse 13. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 13. Come on. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Come on. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. So he's asking, what do, the, what do people say about you? Some say you, John the Baptist, because they understood that prophets come back, right? Some Elias. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And others, Jeremiah's, really? or one of the prophets, or one of the prophets, because they understood things that most people don't understand this day. People are confused about this thing. You understand? They understood that thing. Watch this. Give me Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6 again. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Really? Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So Elijah came, you understand, and they didn't know that actually John the Baptist was Elijah coming back. That's why I said he will go forth with the spirit and power of Elias. You see that thing? So guess what? He would come during the time as John the Baptist, which is John the Revelator, you understand, and he will come now in his last days to restore the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children back to their fathers before the second coming of Christ. That means John the Baptist, John the Revelator, they are back. Understand that? That means Elijah came and left. That's why now we understand what this Bible is saying. We know who we are. We know. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Mm-hmm. And the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So once Elijah comes, and Elijah turns the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children back to their fathers, what's going to happen to these children when they turn back to their fathers? Go back to Sirach 48. Go back to Sirach chapter 48 and verse 8. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 48 verse 8. Read. Who anointed as kings to take revenge mm -hmm. and prophets to succeed after him. You see that thing? These are the children now coming back to their fathers. There's the prophet. Is that the anointed kings to take revenge? Who's the king? This is plural here. Who is the king? We are. And Christ is the king of kings. Who are the kings? The 12 tribes of Israel. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 1. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 1. Go ahead. Hear therefore, O ye kings, mm. and understand, learn, ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. You, you see what the king, who the kings are? The kings are the judges of the ends of the earth. That's the kings, plural. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Give ear, ye that rule the people. Mm hmm and glory in the multitude of nations. You see that thing? He's talking about Israel, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. 
So go back. Sarah chapter 48, verse 8. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 48, verse 8. Wait. Who anointed his kings to take revenge. Now, right, guess what? We have been, the, the most High like God put the spirit on Elijah in these last days to anoint us to take revenge upon our enemies when we take pick up this Bible and do what it says. Go ahead. And prophets to succeed after him. And prophets to succeed after him. That's the children coming back to their fathers. And those children will grow up to become what? Prophets. That's why it says, and prophets to proceed after him. To do what? To do the same thing that Elijah did. To go out there to wake up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's what we're doing this day. You understand? And that's what Elijah did for us. So go back to Malachi 4. Malachi chapter 4, read verse 5 and 6 together. The book of Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mm. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Before the Lord returns, he says what? The children will return back to their fathers and there will be prophets that will succeed after what Elijah would have done. Understand that. Jump up to verse 4 now. The book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, mm. which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Give me John 14 verse 26. Give me John chapter 14 verse 26. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. Go ahead. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. who the Father will send in my name, Read. he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. You see that? He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So, go back to Malachi 4, verse 4, once again. The book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 4. Go ahead. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Stop right there. You see that? Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. You understand? The law of Moses, guess what? Will teach us all things and bring all things to our remembrance. Like who we are, where we come from, what happened to us. Okay? Read. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the word unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Amen. Amen.